This episode of Techzilla Bytes is brought to you by Toyota's hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Leave your mark. Toyota, let's go places. Hey guys, I'm Shannon Morse over here at CES 2015 at the Toyota booth. And I figured since we're talking about hydrogen and how it works in the cars, I actually wanted to find out more about the stations that we might potentially see across the entire United States and across the entire world. So I'm over here with Aaron Harris. Hi Aaron, how are you? Very good, very good, thank you. So you're the technical director of Air Liquide, and this is one of the probably many companies that might potentially build these hydrogen stations for consumers. So what exactly is blue hydrogen? That sounds very fancy. So blue hydrogen really represents uh, a concept of what we tr typically and, and normally use uh, natural gas for producing hydrogen. You might call that brown, for instance. That sounds kind of gross. Yeah, I, I can understand. <laughs> it, and, and then ideally, we want to produce green yeah. hydrogen uh, from renewables uh, that you traditionally find, solar, wind, and, and what have yeah. you. So would blue be like between black and brown and those ugly colors and potentially our beautiful green? <laughs> yeah, so exactly. The, the idea here is that there's a lot of uh, resources in biogas, and in particular biogas and biomass, where we're converting garbage or waste of other types Ew. directly to uh, <laughs> natural gas that you can inject into the, into the natural gas uh, system. And then we use natural gas to produce hydrogen you, through a nomination process that's common with green electricity, similar process and concept. So it sounds like you guys have been doing this for a while, is that right? Yeah, we have uh, as far as the biogas production and then uh, as far as hydrogen production for sure. Uh, you know, we, we do produce hydrogen, a lot of hydrogen that goes into your gasoline already. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You, uh, you don't realize, but there's a substantial amount of hydrogen that's used in your gasoline and to produce that gasoline in the first place. I, I live really close to a refinery up in San Francisco, the Bay Area, and it's it's kind of smelly sometimes, I'll be honest. There's hydrogen at that refinery? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's used to desulfurize or take the sulfur out of oil. So you have low sulfur diesel, you need low sulfur gasoline, that you need to remove those contaminants from the oil itself, and that's hydrogen is used in that chemical process. So it, actually, I think some of the statistics have mentioned somewhere in that neighborhood of 21 million hydrogen vehicles could be powered using the hydrogen that we already use to make gasoline. So it's one thing I was concerned about, to be honest, was how much it's going to cost, because it sounds like a really complicated process, but you're already doing it? We're already doing it from a standpoint of being able to reform uh, natural gas into hydrogen. And uh, doing it at a smaller scale, being able to con conveniently fit that into your neighborhood, yeah. so you can put it at your local gasoline pump, that's where the challenge is going to start to lie for us as far as the technology and really being able to enable that from what's typically industrial scale, industrial size equipment, uh, tanks and trailers that you might see rolling down the road that go to industrial plan and do their chemical process. Yeah. Now we have to put that into a gas station at your local corner shop and you know, it's already got retail and it's zoned differently and, and all these other aspects that are going to present challenges that we're going to have to overcome from a technical standpoint and, and be able to work through and that's really what we're, we're all about in that sense, is using the hydrogen that we already make, bringing it to you so that we can fuel the Mirai and, and others. Yeah, I think it would be a little bit hard to calculate exactly how many consumers in a target market are going to need these hydrogen stations. That's absolutely true. I, you, you really, it, there's that, the challenge in many ways is our typical business model from an industrial gas standpoint is to provide gas and meet and match supply and demand. We're very good at doing that and being able to identify where is somebody going to need gas and they, they tell us and it's a, it's, a, it's a business to business transaction. Now, business to consumer transaction is a bit more dynamic. Yes. You don't know when the consumer is going to show up. Yep. You don't know when everybody's going to come. We know maybe Fridays are great, maybe Tuesdays not so much. Yeah. Now, that's not as good for our typical you know, business model. So learning that dynamic as well is going to be then another important part. And you know, really to think of the sort of theme of CES and what those things are, uh, the, the, really, the things we're seeing from the Internet of Things and, yeah. and other data analytics concepts is to really look back at the data analytics of the past. Yeah. We're probably in the 1920s and 1930s equivalent of alternative fuels. Yeah. So you don't find fuels everywhere. You don't find charging stations everywhere. Uh, and you have to look for them. Well, in the early 1920s and 30s, gas stations gave out free maps. Yeah. They gave out free maps <laughs> That's awesome. because 
those free maps told you where the stations were, and they wanted to take you to your, their stations. Well, and so free maps have really become free apps, yep. and now bringing that back to you so that it's more convenient so you can find them, you can plan it, you know when you're gonna charge, and you, we're seeing that trend, and we'll be able to use that trend as well for our stations to be able to match supply and demand more carefully and closely, you know, in hopes of making this market work. We're really excited about it. Really quick questions for you just before we end this. Uh, first off, can I find these stations anywhere already? Yes, so in Southern California, Northern California, you'll find the stations. Okay. Uh, I believe that we're on the order of 10 at this point in time. Overall, I think there's close to 50 that have been funded okay. um, by the state of California. They've put a substantial amount of money into, uh, this is from the state and the grant awards, uh, to producing or putting, uh, incentivizing us in a sense, the uh, station providers, yeah. into putting those stations in. Um, in California, um, and but you'll start to see them in the Northeast as well as part of our uh, our announcement with uh, a collaboration with Toyota to put uh, 12 stations in the Northeast, and I'm very actively working on putting them there. Yeah. Congratulations on that, by the way. And lastly, why are there two instead of just one stick for the gas? <laughs> That's a great question. So we've been asked a lot that a lot. So this dispenser, it's a, it's a mock dispenser. Um, and one of the things you'll find in, in those stations in California is that there's, there's two different pressures for the vehicles that are out there to be fueled. And so uh, we, we provide the two different nozzles to provide those two different pressures to the vehicles. This will probably be the one unique thing that people will need to get used to is yeah. filling with pressure versus filling with you know just a volume. Uh, well, I, I think people would look at the entry and entrance of it and be like, oh, am I going to spill it? <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah, exactly. And, then, and as was pointed out yesterday, there's no spillage. That's cool. There's nothing that you're going to see fall on the ground or anything else. It's just escaping gas in it. <laughs> Goes up at six feet per second, so it's gone before you know it. Well, thank you so much. That was really, really interesting. I can't wait to see more of these stations because they're actually much prettier than regular gas stations. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> well, I would like to. Yes, definitely. <laughs> of course, since it's mine. But there you go. Thank you so much again. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And where can people find out more about these stations? Well, uh, they could certainly visit uh, our, our website uh, for Air Liquide and, and learn more there. I think the fuel cell partnership, the California fuel cell partnership, and the I would say the, the U.S. Department of Energy uh, are other good places to start and go and look for more. I think Toyota's doing something right here. It's true in Toyota, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to forget. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> of course, if you guys want more coverage from CES 2015 and the Toyota Mirai and everything that's going on with this technology, definitely visit me, comment down below, let me know what you think, and you can check it out all at revision3.com slash techzilla. This episode of Techzilla Bytes is brought to you by Toyota's hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. Leave your mark. Toyota, let's go places.